Hi, I'm Marty Nimco. This is a short, short story about being compulsive. It's called Unhinged. On March 11, 2011, in his cottage on a remote part of coastal Sendai, Japan, old Hitoshi was, as usual, sorting stamps. Each had been placed in priority order uh, in a glass tower. Uh, each time he wanted to review one, he pushed a button and the next stamp was released. He only bought mint, never hinged stamps, uh, but additionally they had to have the color precisely as in the catalog, no fading and of course no stains, crisp printing, any waviness is the result of the stamp having been printed using worn plates, no creases, no inclusions in the paper stock, equal sized margins, all perforations intact, each of equal length, none bent, no dents in the stamp, for example, from the perforation machine, and perfect gum, fully and evenly covering the stamp's back. Hitoshi estimated that he has evaluated over three million stamps. He never touches a stamp with his fingers to avoid his skin oils touching the stamps, which increases the risk of creasing a corner. Instead, he uses special stamp tongs. While such tongs are available for a few bucks, he chose to spend $300 to get a custom-made one to perfectly fit his fingers, shaped into a semi-rounded spade shape with one end a little slimmer. The insides polished with ultra-fine steel wool, then plated in medical quality stainless steel to ensure smoothness. Maybe not surprising, Hitoshi was as careful with everything. Because Japan is subject to earthquakes, everything was quake-proofed down to each cup in his cupboard, which were each of which were spring-attached to the wall. He takes a pill three times a day, so he carries a timer around with him at all times, set to go off at precisely 10, 5, and 12. Because he hated noise, he triple glazed and soundproofed his house using special material he imported from Germany. Super insulation in the ceiling crawl space and soundproofing strips around every window and door. But suddenly, his normally Pacific old Akita dog, Daisuke, which means great helper, poured his arthritic paw against Hitoshi. Moments later, the cottage started to shake, scattering all the stamps onto the floor. Hitoshi glanced over to the stamps but decided to put Daisuke on a leash, and the two of them limped under the mattress. Above the box spring, which would be the safest place in his house, something he had carefully selected years earlier. When the shaking stopped, Hitoshi carefully left the bed, smoothed the bed's comforter, and lets Daisuke off the leash. He returned to his stamps and methodically began replacing the stamps in priority order. Minutes later, Daisuke started limping toward the window, more quickly than usual, and barking at its curtain. Hitoshi carefully rose from his table so the stamps would not be disturbed, and he tiptoed to the window, taking care to not step on any of the cracks between the floor tiles. When Hitoshi arrived at the window, he carefully pulled back each of the two curtain panels so that symmetry was retained. Before he even got a quarter of the way, he saw a tsunami wave just yards from his house. He'd have only seconds before it invaded his cottage. That moved even the deliberative Hitoshi into action. He raised the first of his 17 four-inch thick stamp albums to the highest shelf, but then the wall of water crashed the door and swept Hitoshi, Daisuke, and the stamp tower to the floor. The next victims were the stamp albums. Each had been meticulously filled with thousands of rare mint, never hinged, and otherwise perfect stamps, each stamp protected by its own plastic sleeve. Two more waves, each smaller, but still reaching the cottage, fortunately did little additional damage, and then it stopped, and the water started to slowly drain. Hitoshi could merely stare and didn't notice Daisuke convulsing on the floor behind him until his dog uttered a faint groan. He bent down to his Daisuke, petting her to try to stop the convulsions, but they wouldn't stop. Hitoshi picked up the phone to call the vet, but the earthquake and tsunami had knocked out phone service. He put Daisuke on the leash, but she would not move, so he carried the 40-pound dog into the car, but the waterlogged vehicle would not start. Hitoshi removed Daisuke and tried to get her to walk with him toward the vet's home office a mile away, 
but the dog would not move. So Hitoshi carried the still convulsing dog. Every half minute, the old Hitoshi would have to stop, put Daisuke down, and try to get her to walk, but to no avail. After a half mile, Daisuke died. Hitoshi stared at his only friend, cried, turned around, and trudged back to his cottage. Then he noticed the only house on the way home, a shack, which appeared destroyed by the tsunami. He plodded there as fast as he could limp. He knocked. No one answered. He nursed the askewed door and heard moaning. An old woman was trapped under a timber. Her head was bleeding profusely, her skin pale, eyes vacant. Abandoning his usual meticulousness, he grabbed the only piece of cloth he could see that wasn't water-soaked and pressed it against the mortal wound. He tried to lift the timber off of her, but to no avail. He said, I'll get help. No, she replied weakly. He continued to the door. She says, no, please. I was done before. This just helps. Hitoshi turned to her and she held out her hand. He took it. Then there was silence for what must have been a minute. She said, it's no longer fun. He nodded. She said, I paint for a bit, dance for a bit, grow flowers for a bit, <laughs> flirt for a bit. Well, more than a bit. He smiled, and she continued, I worked some, too, helping orphans find homes, setting up museum exhibits, and even running a geisha house. Have you lived well? And before he could answer, she died. He stared at her, covered her head, bowed deeply, and padded out and back toward his cottage. There, he mailed, unsorted, a handful at a time, his now damaged stamps to the people who would still value them, his beginning stamp collector customers. Then he strode to the medical medicine cabinet, not caring whether he stepped on a gap between the tiles, and opened the bottle of the OCD medication he had heretofore refused to take. Next, he began cleaning his cottage adequately, but not perfectly. His furrowed brow relaxed. Thank you for watching. I'm Marty Nemko.